This week on the show, we're featuring Sapphire, an interview with Colin Strajak, Opal 4 under the microscope cam, salad on Why'd I Buy That, 11 New Jokes, and Diet Food for Thought. I took my girlfriend to a haunted house. The scariest thing about it was the price to get in. Let's start the show. This piece of sapphire is showing its its crystal formation. They grow in hexagonal columns. But the hexagons are formed from dual triangles. And the triangles are pointing in opposite directions. If you'll notice, the little triangle is imprinted inside of a large triangle, making it actually two triangles converging on top of a third triangle on top of the fourth and fifth triangle. This triangle is trying all of its angles like we're trying to live stream. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys got questions. We're going to interview Colin Strajak here in about 10 minutes. I hope you have questions about Sapphire, because now is the time to ask them. I'll try and answer them for you. And cheers. Welcome to the show. Ah, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Talking about you. Yeah, you're great. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the live stream. How's it going down river mining and lapidary by Jeffrey? What's up, dude? So we're going to interview Colin Strajak. And for those of you who aren't familiar, he's a comedian. He's a podcaster. He's a deep thinker. He's a good talker. He's also a rapper and he does, dude, he's got a lot of sticks in the fire. We're going to talk to him and we're going to get into some of that. Hopefully it's going to be an exciting interview. And when I say hopefully, I'm rather confident about that. Colette, thank you for coming by the show. I have several uncut sapphires. Uncut sapphires. I uh, I saw these little sapphires available, and I was like, "We're gonna grab some while they're there," because they 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 aren't available anymore. It was like a it was like a short time only type thing. Ooh, we're running out of film, aren't we? Man, I really don't have much going on with this thing. I, I did. I must have done most of it. Um, yikes. I did most of it on the polish lap. I thought that it would get a lot of clicks, and I wanted to kind of roll over Colin's interview. Let's get the microscope portion out, shall we? We'll play a little bit of Opal. Opal video after this. Make sure I get some good old fashioned microscope cam going. That's the size of it. Pretty cool, right? Thought I'd highlight that little triangle. I kept it as a, a hexagon and I kept the triangle in it. I thought about getting fancy with it, but I thought, no, we're just going to highlight the, the little simpleness of it. And it's blue. 
it, man, I, I really got to get out the photo box because that looks white up in the corner and it is, it is dark blue. It's a darky blue. Let's see the microscope cam. Boom. All right, I'm going to focus in so I don't hurt you guys' eyes. Kiwi Claw, welcome to the show. How you doing, bro? Slice. How was work? You keeping it low? Keeping it on the down low, low? That direction is where we'll go. All right, microscope cam. Bling! There we go. Do you have any questions about sapphire? This stuff does not polish at all with sandpaper. The cerium oxide? Nope. Polishes with diamond grit. I got advice to polish it on a flat lap with some diamond paste, and I was thinking, yeah, I'll do that. I mean, it... it it smooths over a little bit with some cerium oxide, but you see these pits? I can't even seem to work those down with, like, some cerium oxide. Nah, I, 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 can, I can knock down the hills, but it, it just smooths that sandpaper right over. I'll show you the backside. I actually thought about making the backside the feature. Okay. Here, I'll give you an example. See that big flat area in the middle? This flat area. Oh, too far right. Right there at the end of the fingernail that I need to cut. It's been a long week. Eating too much finger fingernail growth hormone or something. But anyway, see how not deep it is? I tried to sand down on that thing. Nope. Not even with 400 grit. Yeah. So I decided I'd, I'd feature this side. And actually, I'm glad I did because it's got more facet to it. I really like this gem. Simple it as it is, and opaque as it is, I because I like the translucent gems, right? <clears throat> A lot of work today. Dusty. Nice to get some of that gem juice. <sighs> okay. So, that's the feature piece. Let's do a little bit of this here. Opal video. Where's it at? What's this one? Nah, that's a piece of Peridot. Um, looking for something that's interesting to ya. Hmm. Oh, I know, I know. We'll just go to the next folder. And click on this one. Nope. Not it. You know what we're going to do? We're going to search Opal. Instead of reading? Yeah. This will give you an idea of what's going on with Colette's ring. So. There we go. All right, so this is not Colette's ring piece. This is a different piece of opal that I got in case Colette's ring piece doesn't work out. Because, sure, the, the piece that you're looking at in the video, it's got the green, it's got the off-white, perfect match. But it's not big enough in the green area, so I'm trying to, trying to find the right area. So that's where we get into this. Yeah, that's the green. But notice, it's kind of green over here, but then not so much here. It's like I need to wear down a little bit more of it. And that gets us into, is it thick enough? It's close. We're cutting it close. 
and I'm going to have to make it small enough around, which means I need to get a new lap. So that's the opal, the progress on the opal. And I really, I, li I like looking at this under the microscope because it helps me determine if it's going to work or not. And I'm glad you're here for it. I'm glad Colette's here for it, but I'm glad all of you are here for it. This is the other side. See, it's got like this, this shed in the middle of different stuff. And so that side's not going to work. That's actually, this side is actually the top side that I was just grinding off in that video there that I just played and ran out of. Maybe this one? Oh, this is the other one. This is the one that didn't really work out. But then I flipped it over to the other side. And I think we kind of found our area. It's up in this corner. But I need to wear it down a little more and take it to the buffer and buff it and make it actually show. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. And one other thing I wanted to show is this piece of emerald I got. Because we're working on sapphire, ruby, emerald, diamond, the Fantastic Four. Look at the green on that. That is really cool. There's a lot of different chunks in there, but I think it's going to be fun to work with. This is fun little emerald. Okay, I'm late for my interview. I got to do that. I got to I got to say you are all fantastic. I hope you've got some questions for Colin. Colin Strajack. Comedian, host, philanthropist, podcast creator, content creator. And um, let's see, I can go ahead and switch to this thing, and is the chatbot working? Okay, great, great, great. Christina and Sun Go Squad, oh, Christina, I gotta get you salsa, so... Yes, to salsa. Actually, it's in the plan. Um, I, I finally got the boxes. I was having trouble finding the boxes that I send the salsa with. And join with computer... Recording in progress. Oh, well, thank you. Join with computer audio. Uh-oh, I might not be able to use my video unless I get rid of the video from this. Did I do a lot? Yeah, I've done live before. Oh, wow, Mother Nature's here. Mother Nature, I got to come down to uh, Missouri and see you. I, 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 like, I've been to Missouri, but it was to buy fireworks. I got to tell you guys about that story. Buds and Hazard, welcome to the show. You guys are awesome. You got, you got some great questions. 15 to 2,000 grit takes it off slowly. That's the thing is I once I get to that, I need to get it a little bit more polishier. Okay, so got to make sure I got... There he is. I see Colin. What's up, man? How's it going, sir? Let me make sure I got um, all my uh, my stuff lined up. Okay, it won't start the video. I'm seeing it's virtual cam. Seeing a picture of a computer, an old one. Select another video camera for the set. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get the interview card set up. Yeah, that's a Sony Vio. And let's see, the, the story with that is. I'm going to try and do like three things at once. The story with the Sony Vio is that um, I was given, no, we want to do, we want to do uh, open VR, window capture. There we go. I was given uh, the Sony Vio computer by my great aunt. And oh, we got to close out. Oh, there we go. We got to close out the microscope cam. Okay. I was given the Sony... I, I should have had this ready ahead of time. 
<laughs> You're good. So the Sony Vio, it's complete, man. And I'm like, you know, when you when you're talking about collecting old electronics, it's got to be like something landmark, right? Mm -hmm. And so this thing has not the one in the picture. That's just a stock photo. Yeah. It's some B-roll. But the one that I got, it's got the microphone. It's got a remote control. It's got the DVR card, you know, upgraded video, extra RAM, two hard drives. It's got the CD burner and the CD or the DVD burner and DVD player. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. High quality stuff, you know. Yeah, and especially if you can add more RAM and upgrade it. Boom. We got it. Okay. Let's see if I can center this. And then I got to put it behind the banner. Because I got a little banner going on. Gotcha, gotcha. It says, uh... Am I going to be able to see you or am I just looking at the Sony Vio the whole time? No, I'm going to I'm gonna try and get it. Okay. It says, <laughs> um... There we go. Boom. Hey. Oh, there you go. All right. There you are. It's It reads, Comedian, podcaster, philanthropist, and rapper Colin Strajak. Yeah. Type Colin to spawn his link. Type Colin. So, hey, Martial Artist 2012, welcome to the show. Austin McCool made it. All right. We got some awesome people in the chats. This is great. What's up? Also, it's supposed to drop some links for you. Like, you can type hashtag MDO, and it's supposed to... Lo okay, yeah, it's got your YouTube and your TikTok... And then it's supposed to have, mod yeah, learn and grow with modern day overthinker. It's supposed to drop those every five minutes. So, oh yeah, guy, guys, make sure you post a, like a question mark so that I can tell that you're asking a question. But first, we got to ask the get to know you question. Yeah. Colin, if you won the lottery and you went for pizza, what would be your lottery pizza? A uh, lottery pizza would probably be my go-to is pepperoni mushroom. Like I'm pretty simple. I or I mean, this is lottery money, man. You, I mean, you can have uh, filet mignon and lobster. You can go to the moon yeah. to get your cheese. Honestly, uh, if I had to get it from anywhere, it would be a Lou Malinati sausage pizza which is just one of my favorites. Nice. They have a okay. sausage that completely covers the whole pizza. Oh, dude. Like, okay, so I went to, to one of the Chicago pizza places. I'm going to get it wrong. It's like Gino's or Giordano's. Giordano's, yep. They said, do you want, you want crumble or no? Do you want, yeah, do you want crumble or patty sausage? And I said, patty. I thought, you know, yeah. a bunch of sausage. One... It's giant sausage bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. That's how they do it. it. You don't miss any bites, man. You get sausage in every bite. Yeah. Okay, that that's classy, man. And uh I like your answer. Some people like this Chicago pizza because it's like they're like I know uh dude from Barstool, Dave Portnoy, who does all the pizza reviews. Um he talks he talks crap about Chicago style places. He's like, it's not really pizza, it's lasagna. I'm like, yeah, it's it's a lot. Like you only need one slice or two and you're done. I count it as pizza. I mean if it yeah, was lasagna, like it'd have noodles. Exactly. Yeah. He's just a hater. Hater, he's yeah. <laughs> he's an East Coast guy. That, you know Dude, well, when I was on that live stream from New York, uh, we went and got one of those 99-cent slices. It was actually $2. And it was... I got my money's worth. Yeah. But I like that deep dish, man. I mean, that, that is good. it's got I the like, flavor. I like a good thin, thin crust pizza, though. I can appreciate that. It was good, but I got to say, it was probably just because it was the cheap place. The... The cheese was good. I'll give them that. The crust yeah. was, it was like a 7 or 8 out of 10. There was yeah. no sauce. I don't know how they get by in New York without condiments. You know, yeah. I'm glad I didn't do my condiments joke. Because out here, you know, <laughs> we, we, we got condiments, like half the fridge is condiments. You go over to the sink, hot, right cold, 
condiments. It's like, you know, I want a tub so I can dip the whole thing and then I'll lick it off my wrist. You know, but, but, um, the pep, the thing is that let me down is the pepperonis taste like bike tires. Ooh. Yeah. That's... Not that how I chew bike on tires? bike. How many, yeah. I was like, how many bike tires you <laughs> chewed on? It's, it's the smell, the smell of the bike tire. Yeah. You can match it. the taste of the pepperonis. Well, half of tasting is smelling anyway. So yeah, I get what you're saying. Okay. So I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about your, yourself and what you do and then we'll get to what you're selling so yeah. um comedy right yeah comedy so what got you into comedy and what advice do you have for people who are considering comedy so what got me into comedy was i was going to shows a lot a lot of local shows and uh i know chris schlichting's brother uh, and, uh, he knew that I knew him and I kind of talked to him after the show every once in a while, I would go pretty frequently and he was like a couple times he went up to me and was like, you know, you come to these shows all the time. When are you going to go up on stage? Cause I would go there like by myself and watch, like sometimes I would go with other people, but I don't, I'm one of those people that has no problem doing things by myself i don't care um uh, no that's and, cool man because i mean so, sometimes there's a lot of like an anxiety going somewhere by yourself you know yeah i've gotten over that a while ago um i don't worry about that sometimes i'll go out to eat by myself i don't give a shit like it doesn't bother me um but um he finally asked one last time and was like hey when are you gonna go up there and then he and then he posted, uh, Tom Fuller on Tremont posted something about doing an open mic. You know how they do like they, they'll post and say, Hey, we're going to do an open mic comics messages. If you want to sign up. And I was like, whatever, I'll sign up. And I signed up. So I knew in advance, it wasn't one of those on the spot, open mic type of thing. So I knew a little bit of it in advance, but still I didn't know how to prepare. And then that was in April of 2021. And, uh, I've kind of been, there was a little bit of a gap there where I didn't hit as many mics at first because I was like, I don't know how much I want to do this. I knew I liked it. Um, and then I just started hitting open mics as much as possible because that's what, that's the advice that I was given. And that's the advice that I will give everyone else is go to as many open mics as you can, even if you have to drive and travel and go to different ones. Because it's just like at bats, like it's like just as many at bats as you get, the better, the more opportunities you are going to have to hit a home run per se. Practice. Like yeah, it's just practice. And also networking and making those connections with different com comedians and, you know, hanging out before or after the show and shooting the, shooting the crap with everybody and just letting, letting them know that, uh, you know, that you're still that you want to do this and we have a cool community in our yeah, area. Yeah. That's we, we got some really cool and encouraging people. You yeah. Know? Everybody's really encouraging. Nobody's really like, um, for the most part, like nobody's really bringing anybody down and everybody wants people to go up. And I actually met a comedian recently when I was in Cedar Rapids and, uh, at the lucky cat, which is a great, place in cedar rapids anyone who's watching this in cedar rapids it's a new comedy club newer and uh they're doing a great job and I met yeah i gotta check there. that out yeah i met a guy there that does improv and stand up and he lives in davenport i'm like you drive up here all he's like but he's from cedar rapids he's like i just feel comfortable here i'm like dude like just show up to an open mic we'll be cool like nobody's gonna be like who do you know here? It's not like a frat party. Like we yeah. don't do that here. Like we're welcoming. We're like, get up there, go do time, man. Like, so uh, you would say uh, bravery and encouragement got you started. And oh, yeah. your advice is to go practice at open mic practice in the real deal. And then also network, talk yeah. to other comedians. Oh yeah. And get, ask them for feedback. Cause they'll give it to you if you ask them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some of them 
uh, are afraid to give, you know, honest feedback because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or bruise their ego. Cause um, I get that, especially when you just get started, you don't, you know, you don't want to try to change everything at once. Cause then you're just going to be on stage, like just overanalyzing everything. Uh, yeah. Cause that like, when I got the jokes, that's just the start. Then you've oh, got yeah. like delivery, you've got fidgeting, you, you got crowd work. You got like what I'm like, is that what I sound like? How do I look? Is, am I holding the microphone close enough to my face? Yeah. Am I even paying attention to the crowd or am I just looking down the whole time? Right. I've caught myself doing stuff like that and, or, you know, maybe I should leave the microphone in the stand because I'll mess around with the cord too much and just like little things like that. Just noticing those things and also videoing yourself as much as possible helps help me at the beginning. Yeah, because I like I'm like, all right, got to set the microphone stand to the side. Remember my jokes and I'm busy trying to let that's one of the things is memorizing the jokes because I'll get oh, yeah. sidetracked Especially with, with that. Like, you, and me, you and me don't tell stories, really. Mm hmm we tell more one liner type of jokes. So yeah, memory, remembering those can be a lot, especially um, when it's like, Oh, Hey, look at those. And you know, you're in, you're in the front row or you're, you're looking at somebody in the front row and it's like, Oh, they're, they're wearing a, a tube top or something, you know? And it's like, Oh crap, my jokes. I, I was supposed to remember. Or somebody says something or, mm -hmm. you know, Ben Woodfield starts laughing. Uh, <laughs> The code, yeah, crowd work, and then back. Oh, what was I trying to remember? <laughs> yeah, you easily get thrown off. So, real quick side note: Have you done the tomato? You've done the tomato throw show, right? I have not actually. Oh, uh, man, yeah, I was gonna start going, and then Stevie started his open mic, and that's yeah. local. And I was like, well, I don't have to drive anywhere, and still do right. stand up. And I love Stevie, so I'll support his show. Um, rather than I do like Dubuque though, and I like the. I like the guys in Dubuque and they have a, they have a cool little, it's a smaller group of guys and a um, couple female comedians I've met on and off um, that do a really good job and are also very welcoming. Well, I got to bring people up to speed in Dubuque, Iowa. There is a tomato throw open mic show yeah. and it's they cool give concept. the, they give the audience foam tomatoes to throw at the comedians. There's like a prize for the most tomatoes, prize for the least tomatoes. And just to kind of tie that in, I have my, my chat bot set up. So if people type exclamation point tomato, it will say you have thrown a tomato Yeah. during the joke portion of the show. So awesome. yeah, but anyway, um, so switching gears to your podcast, you have a podcast called Modern Day Overthinker. Yes. And yes, that title is is very catchy. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm I'm like that's me. I'm modern. It's nah. the daytime. I overthink. Yep. It's relative and it's something a lot of people can relate to and it just it just came to me one day and I remember and I would repeat it. Uh I was telling this to uh Uncle Cletus, uh, when I had him on the podcast, which is the episode I'm dropping tomorrow. Oh, cool. Uh, it'll be actually with his real name, which is Robert James. And um, we talked about the origin, the origin of the title. And basically, I used to, as you know, I like to use Twitter. I used to use Twitter a lot more than I do now. But because uh, I think Twitter used to be better. Mm -hmm. uh, but there would be times where I would just randomly um, tweet just modern day overthinker because I would just be in like so in my head and I like described myself as that and when I wanted to start at first the podcast was just going to be a blog because I like blogging I like writing and I used to do that before um, and I had a blog before uh, and it wasn't about mental health or anything it was totally different but so I thought I was going to do more blogging uh but then it turned into I was like why don't we do a podcast I think one of my friends actually brought up the idea and I was like that that'd be a good idea and then uh it took a little while for me to be consistent but over the last year I've just been pumping out episodes and like uh like uh, you were able to put in the post that uh, um with my little flyer that I created the other day um 
that I'm doing episodes every Monday until the end of the year. Uh, I would like to continue that past the end of the year, but I wanted to at least set that goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I continue recording them and cause it, it's good for me. Uh, it's not only good for uh, the listeners, but it's good for me because I get to know people and I like talking to people and hearing their stories and their struggles and how they deal with their mental illness or, you know, if they have friends that have mental illness uh, and just dealing with life in general. Just well, I, I love listening to it because you do get deep like that. Yeah. I mean, like like I try to develop what is my show here. It's it's about gems. It's a variety hour. I do the jokes at the end. I do the wide eye by that portion, which is kind of a, a deep thought process into, you know, if I'm I'm buying chips, there's so many chips in the store. Why did I buy which one? And you know, what what goes into that? But like I try mostly like I heard you saying on on your podcast that the internet can sometimes be really toxic. Mm -hmm. And so what I try to do with my show is be positive and upbeat and and give people a place to recharge their 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 positive outlook on life instead of being negative. And um, I noticed that in reference to what you were talking about, you you will post encouraging encouraging comments and stuff under the modern day overthinker like facebook page and stuff and and i want to say that that's really cool that that's uh that's something i appreciate yeah the funny thing about that is uh if you had talked to colin like six years ago i would have said that that's cringe i always <laughs> said that that's stupid because i was then i was very negative and i was also deep into um substance abuse and uh I did not have a very positive outlook on life. I thought people who posted stuff like that were corny and cheesy. And, you know, I was all about trying to be cool. And now I could care less about any of that. Like I completely flipped my perspective on life and yeah, being more positive and putting that positive stuff in the world. And some of those cliches, some of those sayings are just very, they're true. There's a reason people repeat cliches is because there's a lot of relevance to them. Or there's a reason people share a lot of that, those positive thoughts is because they're like, oh, they can relate to that. And if I can have somebody relate to something and help, you know, change their day or even change their hour to make it better, like, that's awesome. to me. Yeah, well, and then one of the problems with trying to be cool is that yeah. usually it leads to being a poser. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was all, I was not myself. I did not know who I was for the longest time. And well, now you're part of the trendy club because that's one of the things I don't remember how we got into it, but I, I wound up putting the hashtag trendy club in a lot of my posts. <laughs> trendy club. We're just, we're, we're ahead of the curve, man. I mean, we were doing these like Zoom meetings, uh, you know, a few years before covid and all that stuff happened and and uh you're part of it welcome to the welcome to the trendy club welcome to the club. well i'm happy you're part of any club i was listening to uh uh one of my favorite comedians uh i don't know if you were going to ask me that or not but my one of, one of my favorite comedians i had i did a show last night like a private show at a recovery event and mm, uh okay and it was just a group of guys. Um, it was a, like a men's type of retreat. Um, and on my way there, just to kind of get myself in comedy mode and everything, I listened to one of my favorites, which was Mitch Hedberg. Oh, yeah, I, I like him. Oh, my God. And he told and when you said club, because he talks about the club sandwich and ordering it, and he's not <laughs> even a member. That's one of my favorite jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how the. I don't even know how I got the sandwich, man. <laughs> you got to be part of the club. Yeah. <laughs> then he describes like the formulation of the club. Colette is asking if you could tell us one of your jokes, if you if you would like to do that. No pressure, but I mean, you're more uh, than. Yeah, I can think of one. Um... You're one about dating where you're, you're like. It's an interview to be a stepdad, or uh, it's probably just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dating. Yeah, um, I've noticed 
recently that dating in your 30s is uh basically auditioning to be a stepdad <laughs> that's a yeah. good one and uh also with with the, some of the dating apps uh the joke that i'm going to retire at the end of the month um and it's a seasonal joke so uh i've been getting ghosted on all the dating apps um not all the time but i've been ghosted a lot so uh i decided to start my own haunted house this year and it did not go well because none of the ghosts showed up <laughs> yeah it's just like going it's, it's, it's kind of a jt cheesy joke which i love jt he's my favorite oh yeah shout out to jt whenever Cage. i say a cheesy joke i'm like that was such a jt joke Dude, that, that root beer joke is so horrible that every time he tells <laughs> so it, bad. I like it more. Yeah, it's so bad, but it's just so funny at the same time because it's so st it's just so stupid. It's like part of being on the inside of knowing that joke and how... As soon as he starts saying it, everybody just groans, all the comedians that have heard it. <laughs> and for, for the folks in the audience, he's like, He's like, what's the deal with root beer? It takes so long for the foam to go down. And that's I basically root beer now. And he gets really <laughs> aggressive and like <laughs> angry about it. Yeah. Oh, he's like, he's just complaining about root beer being foamy. But anyway, um, okay. So what are we, what are we selling? You got a book, uh, you got CDs, you got uh I'm not selling anything that's the thing about the about the podcast is i um i don't have any sponsors that's all all everything comes out of my pocket um to record this podcast because it's a passion project of mine really mm -hmm. um where i basically you know i have typically just one guest and we talk about life we talk about mental health we talk about uh, different experiences that we had and uh, getting through tough times and just having deep conversations that uh, I think more people need to have in their everyday life. And um, so that's, I'd, you want people to check out modern day overthinker. Yeah. I would like people to at least check out a, check out an episode. I mean, uh, I, I don't like to say, Oh, this is the episode to check out. Cause there's, it depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have obsessive compulsive disorder, I've been doing, I've done a lot of episodes on OCD because I have OCD and I'm very passionate about talking about it. And I know a lot of people, there's an OCD community online that I've met. That's another thing, networking. I've always been good with networking. Sure. I went to business school, so it's like just engraved in me. Um, and yeah, I've met a lot of people online, a lot of therapists, a lot of uh, people in OCD recovery that, uh, you know, that advocate for it and talk about it and share their stories and people, there's a lot of misunderstandings about OCD. So I've done Yeah, like, like you were talking about um, on one of the episodes about how it's not just about making sure everything's straight. Like right now, my phones are charging in a parallel line with my remote control. And that's not that big of a deal. I mean, I can walk out the door without them being straight. But you had, uh, uh, I think it was Jenna Overbow was talking yeah. about how people will drink bleach because they're so obsessed with their insides being clean yeah. and sanitary. And it's like, now that's a serious thing. And, and at the same time, with the less serious OCDs, maybe people aren't familiar with the fact that something is is affecting them and they they've just been living their lives and they could be living a better life if they were more aware of this. I know a lot of people who didn't diagnose with OCD till they were, you know, later on in life. Like me, I'm grateful that I got diagnosed at a young age at, I think I was 13 or 14. Mm. And, um, which was, which were weird times anyway. Um, and, adding you know an anxiety disorder on top of that but being able to know that at a young age but i know some people it, they didn't learn until they were like in their you know in their 20s or even in their 30s which you know they spent that whole time like thinking something was wrong with them or not even really realizing you know what they were doing was um holding them back i would say mm. Yeah, no, that's why I appreciate you doing the podcast. Like, 
to get real is because it's a positive place to learn and grow. I mean, exactly. and that's you doing that, man. I, I really appreciate that. So w- would you rather people check out uh, the, U- the YouTube, of course, because, I mean, they're on YouTube. They're YouTubers. They, they can check that out. But what a, yeah. would you rather uh, Apple, Spotify, both? Whatever you use, really, any spot, any uh, platform that you find podcasts, you're going to find Modern Day Overthinker. I made it so it's readily available. Uh, Ubiquity. Yeah, through any platform. YouTube, uh, I will be putting out more on YouTube over the next, probably starting next year. I'm, I wouldn't say building a studio, but like making my, turning my office into more of a studio. I have recorded in there in the past, but I'm going to, I want to be able to have video uh, in addition to audio uh, and have that on YouTube. So that is something that I'm going to do in the future. Uh, that's why you cool. won't find a whole lot of content on on YouTube. There's some, don't get me wrong, uh, like my interview with Spike Cohen, which was like the most random interview I've ever had, mm. uh, which was cool because like he was the vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. You know, most people are like, oh, yeah, it's the third party, but Libertarian Party is the third biggest party in America. Not many people know that. Um, yeah, it just blew I'll right past the Green Party. And I found right. out there was in 2016, there was like 25 right. candidates running for president, like who paid the money because you got to pay a certain amount of money or have a certain amount of money yep. in, in a campaign fund just to be able. And, and like most people don't even know, you know. Yeah. And we didn't even talk about politics, really. I mean, it, it got brought up a couple th- couple issues that people agree on like, you know, how you, the U S healthcare system is complete garbage, right? Like everybody can agree that it just, at, this- at some point. Yeah. People can say, cause I mean, we're spending a third of our tax dollar budget on that. It's, I mean, that's a lot of money, you know, and yeah. it's like, there's, there's gotta be room for improvement, but exactly. I, I did, that's you guys everybody. talked about, um, like substance abuse and, and oh, yeah. sobriety and and uh, uh, just overcoming issues with yourself to try try and better your and it was a great episode. It was a lot of fun. So on your YouTube, the Colin Strajack YouTube, you've got like jokes and you're doing reels and stuff. But would you rather push your TikTok or your YouTube or both or? Uh, where I post the most uh, is probably. For comedy has been TikTok because I not only post my clips, I'll do little duets or uh, response videos that are kind of funny. Okay. Uh, that I have a lot of fun with that. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you go to cstrajackcomedy.com, that has the links for literally everything I do. Oh, so. Okay. Cool. I, yeah, I should probably should have pinned your link tree or something like that. That is that that redirects to my link tree. All I did was buy the domain. Like, okay. So I wasn't going to build a whole new website when all it's going to be is links anyway. Sure. Like, why would I waste the money in doing that? Actually, I've thought about transitioning Modern Day Overthinker that website to link tree just because I'm paying for hosting for for no reason really right no i i that's why i switched to uh google domains is just because it's like 12 bucks a year it's so so cheap and they it's secure and all that i mean i'm not a sales pitch for google but yeah they 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 do the the like i was using godaddy and i switched to them and uh i use google sites for my for my dot jacobleydowney.com but then i i use google domains for the domain portion of it um but anyway, uh, they're they're giving me the the time crunch thing. Um, they're saying pay money or or stop recording. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, I I mean I I use Streamyard sometimes, but Zoom is it's so much easier to say than Streamyard. Yeah, I mean they, it's more syllables, you know. Anytime yeah. you want to be politically correct, just add syllables. It shows yeah. you're willing to put in the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least you can BS your way through it. So, um, I, I, I hope I didn't miss anybody's uh, questions. Um, is there some way, 
somewhere or some way that they can get in touch with you if they have questions, even even private questions that they want to ask about like mental health or, or getting better? Yeah, uh, mdoverthinker at gmail.com is the best email for that. There's cool. also a on on my link tree on the cstrange.comedy.com website. There's a um, since I pay for more for link tree, it's not that much. Uh, there's a contact tab. You can just use that. That goes to my email anyway. So. Oh, uh, I was gonna say. What about gemstones? Do you ever have you ever been curious about gemstones? You ever had a rock collection, or has it been a mystery your whole life? It's been a mystery my whole life, really. Uh, my collection that I've kind of gotten into mainly because uh, it was a family thing was coins. So, oh, cool, dude! Yeah, I've so got a few uh, mic. I've shown coins under the microscope cam. One time, I actually did a giveaway for a quarter from a million dollars nice. where i gave away a quarter that was rumored to have been part of a million dollars at one point <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah and uh we're actually gonna do a raffle i think on on next set this coming saturday for a jar of salsa and uh, uh some gemstones maybe i'll throw in a coin bring back that joke um, yeah. so yeah, I appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday evening. I could talk to you for hours. I'm sure you get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. I like to talk. So, all right. Well, um, um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll just have to end it there and then I'll finish out my show. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to see you at the next show. Where's your next, uh, comedy appearance? Uh, next show will be my the show that I'm hosting on Thursday. Stand up so, at Stardust. Stand up at Stardust. It's the last one downtown Davenport. So if you live in the Quad Cities, that's the place to be. It's going to be the headliner. Jeff Bailey is incredible. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him, but I haven't yet. That's why I got to go to the stand up at Stardust. Yeah, because everybody I've talked, I've never seen him either. It's all he's based off of all referrals. Every person that I respect in the comedy community was like, he's he's one of the good, he's one of the best ones around. Pretty so, solid. I'm, yeah, I'm excited about it. So. Awesome. All right. Well, I will check that out and I will see you around. All right, man. We'll see you soon. Take it easy. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Record. How cool was that, right? I mean, that I was just there, now I'm here, and now you guys are here and there, and thank you for checking that out. I should have asked him about biscuits. Man, we had some awesome people come by the show. You guys are great. Where was I? We were doing something with Opal, right? Let me load this up. That was a great... He's a great comedian. He's really... He's been encouraging me in the comedy community. And I had to give him a shout out. I didn't want to, you know, drone on and on and stuff about... About how he's been giving me shout outs in the comedy community. But he's been very welcoming. And so I wanted to make sure I got him on an interview. Plus, he's really interesting. Like, I listened to his... I li I've listened to all of his podcasts. Just because uh, they're, they're really great. They're... Like I said, they're a positive place to learn, you know, and you can think about stuff while you're doing stuff. Seven grand biscuits, like 7,000 biscuits. Oh, I should give away seven. I should give away a grand biscuit. Yeah, that's awesome. No, call it cash, cash money, a grand. Who pays $7,000 for a biscuit? Maybe if it's got some gravy. Great interview, Jacob. Thank you, Mother Nature. Thank you, Benny Loco. Thank you, Colette. Thank you, 710. Thank you, Miscellaneous Beer Reviews. Ayo, cheers. Oh, Ron Weasley made it. Thanks, Ron. Do you ever buy salad mix? That's what we're going to talk about on the, on the Why Did I Buy That? And pumpkin carving. Roxy Rance's pumpkin carving. And she's talking about paranormal activity. Oh, yeah, we were talking about ghosting dating. Yes, you are. Do you have a written excuse? I'm going backwards through these. You guys are so cool. Thanks for coming and, and checking out uh, 
uh, Colin and, and, uh, make sure you check out his podcast. That's why I pinned his link. I threw his links up there with the timer. Um, but salad mix, right? Talking about salad mix. Do you ever buy salad mix? I did. Yeah. I mean, I like money. I like to keep my money. I don't like to spend my money. But I did. I fed it into that automatic checkout machine because it was closer to the door than walking all the way down and standing in line behind people with big carts that are towering over with stuff. And like their kids standing there next to the cart and they try to grab something and everything falls on them and it's a horrible, horrible incident. So I just don't look and I go over to the self-checkout Actually, that didn't happen. I don't know why I went there. Probably OCD. Maybe I should talk to Colin. So, but also, what I did is I bought some salad mix. And the reason is because the salad mix has things like cabbage in it. And I'm not actually like interested enough to buy a cabbage and then cut it up. Because I'm always like, and then my hand is yelling at my brain and my brain is yelling at my hand and they're like, what are we doing? On top of it, I'm not really a big salad eater. I mean, I don't really like green things that I eat. It's, you know, green. I like green things that I can put on a ring for Colette. But I do actually like the crunchy white part. And I also like to put cheese and bacon and like Colin said, condiments. I put some ranch dressing on there. That's a tomato from the garden. I like those gemstone tomatoes. And so I'm like, well, if I'm not going to buy all the stuff, and I don't want to sit there and, and chunk up the carrots, and sometimes I do get the carrots. That's why you'd be due to why I buy that for the carrots. But yeah, there is a lot of conscious thinking that goes into buying salad mix. But it's all about getting the small amount plus... Here's the cool part. It's like a dollar for a bag of salad mix. So I get a, a volume for a little money, which is a big deal these days because everything's expensive. And I can just douse it with ranch. And it's basically, it's basically a way for me to eat spoonfuls of ranch without the, the, the self-loathing that comes with just squeezing ranch directly from the bottle into my veins. So I'm, you know, it's it's kind of about the ranch dressing. So I went over to the, the salad area that you're seeing, and I looked through the bags, and I see the bag that's, you know, it's got the orange in it, it's got the purple in it, it's got some different colors, so I know I'm going to be eating something. Mostly it's got the iceberg in it, so I get the crunch that I like. And then I, I look at the price, and I say, oh, that's about a dollar. And then I picked it up, and I walked off, and I bought it. And that's why I bought that. Have you ever bought salad mix? And which one did you buy? And why did you buy that? That's basically what I got for the why did I buy that portion of the show. Organic mixed spring greens in the big clear plastic container. Call it my mom buys those. Yeah, the big weird box. And it's all, it's not like crunched down. Yeah, I think the boxes are down towards the bottom of the picture. And um, spinach, I've always wanted to be into spinach just because of Popeye. But like, really, mostly what I like about spinach is when it's like cooked spinach and there's so much um, butter and salt that it's basically a way to keep the butter and salt on the fork. That's pretty much what I like about spinach. Not the 710 spinach. That's a different kind of spinach. But anyways, that's what we were talking about. I get mine off the bottom shelf. Bottom shelf salad mix. That's, that's where we're going. There really is no top shelf there. I mean, there's the top of the shelf, but it's really like it's all the same stuff. Anyways, talking about the same stuff, I got some different stuff. For the joke portion of the program, we'll just play some of Christina and Sun Ghost Squad's Opal, which is close to being done. 
I'm going to play this video so you can see how close it is to being done. Because I, I actually, I got it down to a triangle. I need to put it on a dop and take it over to the faceter. Okay, where are we at? Joke portion. Jokes? Let's make them quick so I can get you guys. Oh yeah, Tom Kelly is going to start his, his podcast here in a little bit. So we got to get these jokes done and I got to get you guys on your way. Thank you so much for joining me for the show. You guys are fantastic. So how about I treat you to some jokes, huh? I've been painting so much, I joined a strip club. Nope, that's that's not even done. How about this one? I tried growing plants. It's a hit or miss for me. Like this year, I grew a great watermelon, but my artichoke had a heart attack. I did that because artichokes have hearts, but I think it would be a funnier joke if I found a way to write it so that I said, I can't grow plants. I mean, I kill plants in 30 seconds. Yeah, you give me a plant, it will be dead in 30 seconds. Have you ever seen a plant have a heart attack? What do spiders use for Zoom meetings? Webcams. That one's too obvious. My new porn name is Backhoe. These are the Roaring Twenties. Oh yeah, pe people refer to the 1920s as the Roaring Twenties. I think people ref will re refer to the 2020s as the Roaring Twenties as well, but not because of their high quantity of success. I think they'll be called the Roaring Twenties because of their resemblance to a roaring dumpster fire. I took a girl to a haunted house, and it was disappointing. The scariest thing was the price to get in. I actually had this whole, like, bit in my mind where it was like, I took a girl to a haunted house, and we were standing in line, and I was scared of the price to get in. I don't know. It never actually happened. I'm not real big on haunted houses, but, I mean, I used to. I used to go to haunted houses when I was younger. We, we actually, around here, there's a lot of haunted hay rack rides. That's an Iowa thing to say. Uh, let's see. Oh, and, and you, like one of the haunted hay rack rides, they'll actually, they've got a bus. So they'll just load everybody on a bus and drive you through the woods. Um, oh, I heard there's a lot of rats in New York. But maybe that's because I was watching so many political ads. Uh, oh, I don't have a girlfriend, so I have to play video games in single-player mode. No, no. Horrible joke portion this week. That one was for Kiwi Claw. A fish missed school because he was playing hooky. Did I mention this is a horrible joke portion this week? I'm into high-class girls. The ones that like to be spanked with a money belt. And last but not least... Probably because of the joke portion. Someone threw a bunch of instruments at me. I guess they thought I was singing a cappella. Someone pelted me with a bunch of instruments. I guess they thought I was singing a cappella. Or maybe they just got tired of... Where's it at? No, it's the wrong one. No, we're supposed to be... Ah, oh, I lost it. It's here. It's there. It's the joke portion of the program. Okay, we're actually... I'm late for the Tom Kelly show. It's probably starting right now. Sharice! Sharice made it to the show. You guys are so fantastic. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for joining me for that awesome interview. I hope to see you guys next week. Uh, this Saturday, we're going to do the raffle. It's going to be at the same time, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going we're gonna to give away a jar of salsa. We're going to give away a gemstone. We're going to do some other awesome things. And in two weeks, I have another interview already recorded with James Draper. He is a really awesome guy. I can't believe I didn't even take the time to talk to Colin about him. So I will see you guys later. Have a great week. And uh, I'll see you.